We continue to preview the 2023 college football season here on Midwest Sportsnet, and today's stop is Fayette, Missouri, and we get to visit with Dave Brown, who is the new head coach for the Central Methodist Eagles. Coach, first off, let's start right there. Congratulations on the new gig as uh, you're coming to town, introduced in March, so you haven't had a lot of time to uh, really survey the situation yet, but congratulations on the job. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate it, and thanks for having me on today. Well, Coach, let's uh, just briefly talk about last year. I know that Eagles fans probably don't want to talk too much about last year, one in 10 record overall, but um, I, I want to mention it, it. It was an offense that struggled and there were a, a number of shutouts over the, over the course of last season, but that's something that you bring to the table coming from Missouri Western. You were the offensive coordinator there and your team's picked up some good numbers. So you can bring that in. Is that a starting point for you? Yeah, I think it's a, a great place for us to start to build a foundation because obviously last year wasn't the year that anybody wanted. You know, you don't want to go through a lot of the things that this group had to go through. But I think everybody that, that stayed through things is going to be better for it. And, and now, you know, with me coming in, with the staff we have coming in, I think it's it's a great time for us to start with a, a clean foundation and, and build things from the ground up. And, you know, hopefully my experience on the offensive side of the ball is going to help us turn those things around, you know, fairly quickly. You never know how fast until you get everybody in here. Um, but I think that was part of what, uh, you know, drew me to this job and part of what drew uh, the administration here to me as well. Coach, you had a little bit of opportunity in the spring to get to, to see some things. One of the, the the key factors has to be quarterback and players who saw time in that position last year. You don't have people returning. Uh, talk about uh, who we might see and, and what kind of competition is going on. Yeah, we've got a number of quarterbacks that were here going through spring ball. Joe Cambridge, uh, who was with the program last year, wasn't eligible because of some transfer rules uh, to get out on the field. Gavin Watts, who I think appeared in a couple of games uh, he had transferred in from William Jewell, I believe, um, prior to last season as well. And, and those guys, you know, did a good job in the spring, learning the offense, um, growing, you know, as they went over the 12 practices we were able to get in. And then we're still on the, on the look for someone else to generate competition. So I think one of the biggest ways we can improve the program, and, and just through my experience building up other programs over the years at different places, is generate more competition and create that environment. So we're trying to get not just a quarterback, but at every position, you know, reinforcements to come in and, and whether those guys take the job or whether they press the people we already have to be better Either way that works out, we're going to be better for it. So between Joe, Gavin, and whoever else we bring in between now and August, you know, you hope one or two of those guys can win you games. You hope that third guy just doesn't lose you a game, and you hope you got some young guys to develop behind that. That sounds good. Coach, There, there. I know there are some players returning. Among those on the offensive side of the ball, A.J. Allen, the leading receiver from last year's team, as well as uh, leading you in all-purpose yards as well. Yeah, AJ had a great spring. You know, um, he picked things up well. Um, you could tell as we got going, as he got comfortable, you could see why he was productive last season. And in all honesty, I didn't look too much at the stats or too much at the film from last year because of, yeah, I'm going to get a skewed view of everything. I wanted the guys to have a fresh start. And, and so uh, to see that out of AJ, to see the improvement I even saw during the spring was great. And then to kind of, you know, look back afterward and say, oh, yeah, well, this kid already had a good foundation for us. You know, I'm excited about him. I'm excited about Aaron Edwards as he gets out there. we got a couple different receivers. I think that could be one of our stronger position groups um, as we go, especially with some of the other additions we have coming in. Coach, I think that um, when you looked at the the offensive struggles for the team last year, and I'm, and I'm, I'm basing this conversation on statistics, so I know yeah. that. And and I, I appreciate what you said, too. Let, don't get that skewed view. Go ahead, come in fresh. Give all the kids a chance to, to see things fresh as well and, and the opportunity to you know learn what you're doing. But, but based on last year, um, offense, because there was a lack of production, defense one way or the other really couldn't get the job done uh, because uh, you know there were, it was just both sides of the ball. Now, that having been said, there were a number of seniors that, that produced for the team last year. Those are seniors now. Among those returning, Lontis McClinton, one of the, the younger players, but he saw a lot of time and production for the defense last year. Yeah, Tess is going to be a good player for us. You know, uh, he's been banged up a little bit in spring ball. He wasn't really able to go through and, and do the things we needed. But shoot, he was out there um, at our conditioning session this morning looking good, looking like he's going to be ready to go. And, and God, he's he's a great kid, real sharp, you know, on the board when you talk football with him. And, and you could see why he was able to produce those ways. So I'm excited to see what his ceiling really is as we get going and, and kind of building around him. You know, like you said, there was a lot of guys that 
produced almost out of necessity because you're going to have some pretty good defensive numbers that, <laughs> if they're trying to keep you in a game and the offense can't. Um, but now, you know, you hope you get some other guys to step up, and, you know, whether it's transfer guys, whether it's young guys um, that just weren't quite ready last year. You know, building around Tez is going to be fun and, you know, excited to get him out there again. You were announced in, in March as the head coach, which means that you got you got there after signing day and after the main recruiting period. You were talking about players that transferred in. Have you seen much of an influx or, or are you working with a lot of the roster that was already on campus when you got there? Mostly working with the roster that, that was here. Um, there was a couple transfers that were already set to come in, you know, in the spring, you know, that the last staff had brought in. Um, so they weren't, you know, obviously there with us in the fall. And then that's been a constant focus for, you know, you know, my staff and myself is finding the right additions to continue to bring in. And, and especially in the, the college environment today with the way <laughs> there's transfers, it, it's it affects every level of football. And you hear about it from the high levels and everybody worrying about the transfer portal and all that. Well, we don't have the portal at the NAIA, but we have access to ways to get that portal list from the NCAA too. So, <laughs> you know, there, there's still a there's still a lot of recruiting for us to do. Um, we've got some space for some guys and, and we're actively looking through that. And this next, you know, four weeks is really the heavy, heavy fall transfer time um, to find those other additions. So there was a little bit of influx of guys in the spring. And I think some of those guys that, that were brought in are going to be impact guys for us. A couple of them are going to be down the road guys, but everything's going to help as we're trying to turn things over and create the environment we need to create. Well, Coach, things get underway September 2nd, and you have a home game to get things started. Graceland coming to town on that first Saturday of the season. You go on the road to Culver, Stockton, and Clark after that. And then your first conference or division game, Hart South, begins October 14th. That's at home as well, taking on Benedictine. Take us through the first part of your schedule. Yeah, you know, it's exciting. It's going to be fun for me to get to know this league. You know, growing up in the area, growing up in the Kansas City area, I've been around and and, and know kind of – what the environment in the Heart of America Conference looks like, but having not experienced it myself, I think it's going to be fun. I think it could be very similar to an NAI version of the MIAA that I just came out of in Division Two, where you have a lot of solid competition right out of the gate. And what's going to be fun for me is first home game. Yeah, I know a few of the head coaches in the league, so <laughs> having you know Coach Rosper and Graceland down here for uh, Game One and getting to start that off uh, with an opener with a night game here in Fayette, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, and then. You know, going through a couple more of those North Division uh, games, getting a, a road trip up to Clark. That's a place I've never been to to see. Um, and then to be able to get Benedictine and, and have Coach Osborne bring those guys in here. I mean, it's, it's been fun. I've known Joel for a while to see him pick up the, the legacy where Coach Wilcox left off. And shoot, Coach Wilcox recruited me out of high school. <laughs> you know, he'd been there long enough. So, you know, having those games early, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And then just seeing, getting a measuring stick of where we are. You know, I think that's the important thing. We talked to our guys about, you know, obviously you want to perform game day, but you got to perform every day so you're in a position to win on game day. So those game days are just like, you know, tests in the classroom. We're going to find out where we are that day. Does that mean we're the better team? We're the worst team? No, it just tells us where we were that day against those guys. So we're going to see what the growth and development we can get from game one when we get out there to game four when we start the divisional games all the way through the season and see where it goes, see how much improvement we can make. All right, Coach Dave Brown, the new head coach for Central Methodist as the Eagles get things going, as we mentioned, September 2nd at home against Graceland. Coach, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the Summit. We're previewing the 2023 football season and success to the Eagles this year. Thanks, Joe. I really appreciate it.